Hello. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, this is, a, as Chris said, this is a warm-up session for the TripleCon, the real talk is going to be in TripleCon in Vienna with Jesus. Um, this presentation is about development workflow with Drupal Consult. Um, who is Drupal Consult? Anyone use Drupal Consult? Yeah? No? Uh, who is going to Vienna? Two, three, yay, nice, see you there then. Um, so my, on my talk, I will not be like um, getting too much into details of implementation. I'll leave that part to Jesus. I'll be talking like a bit of history. Um, I'm going to show you some of our custom commands. I'm going to show you some of our chain commands, and I'll try a live demo. <laughs> if everything goes well, it's fine. If it doesn't go well, you're going to watch a cheap video. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll prefer if you leave the questions to the end of this session. Uh, maybe uh, and it'll be two sessions if you could keep the questions for later. If that's all right. So, um, a bit of history. Going from bash scripts to CLI commands. Um, I always started with Drupal 7, and we had a beautiful script called DownloadDB. And this DownloadDB script did a lot of things for us. Um, it did things like checking out the repo, um, Running make commands, creating a vhost configuration, create PHP, um, settings PHP, and running grants and then importing database. Actually, it's a funny, funny name because download DB should just download DB. It should be this part here only. It does all these things, and it's a, it's a massive thing. It's like hundreds of lines of code, and the code is maintained by DevOps. So anytime we had to change something here, we need to wait for DevOps to be available to make changes and so we really struggle with this. Um, what else here? Who wants to see a demo of the bash script? No, 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 I'm joking. I'm not joking. Um, so Drupal 8 came, and we started to look into some options. What we're going to do about Drupal 8. So do we write more bash scripts for Drupal 8? Um, do we just write some stuff in pure PHP? which is actually what I started to do. I started to create some classes and stuff, and I'm like, mm, wait one minute. It's already looking very messy, so that's not the, the answer. And then uh, one of our devs uh, just said, you should, should just write uh, symphony commands. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's look at this. And then I'm like, hmm, why don't we use Drupal console, because it's also symphony commands. And then we went for that. And um, I created some uh, this is the project link. I'm going to share the links with you later, so we don't need to, to worry about this. This is the link for our repo with all the commands we use. Um, so we went on and created this, uh, these commands, which will be replacing those from the bash script, and we created them some chains. I will give you more details about what each of them does in a minute. Um, oh, there's, uh, there are two blocks. One, the first one is um, how we actually extended um, the Drupal console. Uh, it was a little bit of a hacky way. It was uh, October 2016. But we managed to um, extend, create our, our custom commands, and we <coughs> our custom chains, and we were already able to use it. But it wasn't nice. Um, and this is, this is more or less what I'm going to show today, how to use the commands. So you can, you can read these blogs there just for History purposes. Oh, the tweet. Thank you. Thank you, Shanti. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Open a tweet now. One second. Now you just popped in, and then it, my slide's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tweeting. <laughs> so this is this is the past. Okay, chains. Uh, this is a chain. It's a YAML file with, which contains um, the commands I want to execute, and in past. When I wanted to run this chain, I would have to do like Drupal chain, my max file, and then path to that file. And it was a bit hard to use. Um, and then I started to talk to Asus, and I'm like, um, we could create something to discover these chains automatically because we know where they are. And he was like, yeah, that's all that. So he, uh, I did like prototype of a chain discovery mechanism, and he accepted pull requests, and then he went and refactored everything, made it work nicely. So um, from there, the, the chains, they would just be just like that. You don't need to specify a file anymore. 
But then we went on and we removed the board chain, so they they just like normal commands. If you look into the into the bug, there's the bug list. Uh, there's a command called uh, Drupal list, and you put site, and then you see the site commands. They just like there, you don't know if it's a chain or not. And but there's something annoying. If you want to specify a name, which are like placeholders or branch, you have to do like this. My mind place holder, blah, blah blah blah. It's very verbose, really hard to use, and uh, we're not happy about that thing. And uh, but loads of things changed. It. <laughs> Pun intended. It's not my accent only. <laughs> <laughs> so modern chains. Um, so they have now metadata, which means um, where is metadata here? Name is there. Description is there. So this is what shows when you when you see the, the list of chains. It's not, the file name is not uh, relevant anymore, it's not needed. Um, it doesn't require that placeholder thing anymore. It support multi binary arguments. Uh, this is something that he didn't recently, I didn't know, just, we just found out, which is great. <laughs> For example, here you've got the poster, and then when you run this command, it's going to show a list, you can choose which repo you, can, you want to use. Very useful. Um, chain can call another chain. Uh, is that a chain reaction? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it can be it can be called except like any custom commands. So you just pass the, the argument here, repository, has repository. That's great. Pros. Um, the chains are flexible, they are good to automate tasks, they speak to write, they are portable, and they can replace um, real commands. For instance, this is the site new command that used to be um, a real command, it was written in PHP before. And then we we're like, oh, this is kind of we can do that with chains, and it's a lot easier to maintain this as a chain. It's a lot easier. You can see this is the code. Before it was like 100 lines. You remember that? Yeah, it was, it was a command. It was a command, and then it stopped working. Yeah. Do you remember? And then it was like, where is the command? Everyone asked me, where is the command? And then we're like, oh, we can do that with chains. And boom, we got it. Important bit, the, the chains, they take precedence on the, on the normal commands. So if you have a chain with the same name as normal command, it will execute that, not your normal command. It's a good thing to know. Uh, the cons, the chains cannot have any logic. And I think it's a good idea. I think we, uh, Jesus has got some crazy ideas about <laughs> doing some logic inside the chains, and I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's your product, you can do it. But I think I, I, I like the idea of keeping them simple. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot of Ansible lately and kind of trying to introduce little, like, you know, like loops, that kind of thing, but still undecided. So the whole idea is, like, should we go and make this, like, so we can I mean, render by Twig, you know, as same as Ansible, you can render a template and then that creates a file on the fly and then execute it. So we're like, uh, but we're still like undecided about it. There's probably too much logic and something you don't want to have. I mean, this is simple, this is fine. I mean, I'm pretty sure at some point we'll have something like, you know, like version two metadata and that will support something like more advanced. For now, like, this is fine and that's it. I mean, placeholders, I mean, environment variables. Keep watching. <laughs> yeah, so it cannot contain any logic, fine. But anything that cannot be done with chains can be done using custom commands. Unknown author. That's actually me, sorry. <laughs> <I'm wrong. laughs> ah, December 2016, uh, Jesus got very excited with the prototype and he decided to write the extend plugin, which made my life a lot easier because now it just, it just installed install something and that gives the gives the uh, possibility to write own commands, and they're gonna be discovered. <coughs> and they're gonna just just work. It's beautiful. Uh, it's very easy to use. Um, of course, um, it's a new thing. It's not like the end of it, but it's really cool. The link is there, and I'm gonna show you now our commands, and I'm gonna explain a little bit of each of them. So the first one uh, to build a site. First command, it should be highlighted. It's, it's not really checkout, should be highlighted. Is it yeah. highlighted? Thank okay. you. Colors there, but it's funny. So, checkout command, when you run it, it will use information from the YAML file. This is the site of YAML that sits in sites folder. And if you use the repo, it's going to get repo um, URL and branch you give in there, and it's going to use the root to say, I'm going to check out this branch on, on this folder. And then you have the compose command, which is basically going to run the compose.json that's on the site. Then you have 
npm, you will find the package.json and it's going to run it. And then you have the run command, which is going to find the run file and it's going to run it. And the next one is settings. Um, this will generate settings PHP for your site. So basically, it makes a copy of the default settings of PHP. It will bend all these includes here. And it will generate some of these includes. For example, the DB, PHP, that's going to contain the database connections based on the information you have in the other file, DB. So that's going to use this to generate the DB settings. And more. PHP unit setup and we have setup, they're based on the same thing. They get a, a template file and they generate the DB hat, um, the hat of the other from the disk. Then we have the DB import. Um, the DB import, what it's going to do is it tries to find a DB dump import. If it doesn't find one, it will go site install from scratch. If it does find, it will import the dump. And it's also using the information from the YAML file where the dump is located. Uh, it supports S3 as well. So, site update is the last command. We're on the site because it does a couple of things. It will put site on maintenance and it's going to enable or disable modules that you list on the YAML file. Uh, it's going to run the network. It's going to import config if it's Drupal 8. It's going to clear the cache and then take off the maintenance mode. Now, if you run, you can run all, each of them individually, but you can just run this command, site build, and it will do everything, all those commands in that order. You can pass a parameter to say, actually, I don't want to do the checkout because I already have the, the, the code base. So you can say, minus, minus skip equals checkout. So if you, if, you don't, if you only want to do checkout, say, run composer and npm and run, you can say, actually, I want to skip the download, the, the import bit and the update bit. So that makes your development faster because you don't need to download the whole thing or run the whole process if you don't need to. And this is one of the, the selling points of not using the uh, download DB script that did everything at once. Oh, <laughs> this part. OK, let's see what happens now, OK? I'll try to do a live demo. And I hope it works. If it doesn't work, I'll play a video for you. We will not live demo that thing that breaks in two seconds and we're working for two weeks. Yeah. I'm 100% confident this is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Should have some music now at this point. Great. Great. Thank you very much. So let's start with. Um, I'm going to show the list of commands we got. Worked. So these are our custom commands. Some of them are chains. Some of them are actual commands. Um, you cannot tell which one is which, which is which is great. But I know these one, these these ones here are chains. So I'm going to run Drupal site build. And I'm going to put environment. I'm going to say it's local. There is a little bug on Drupal console which Jesus is going to fix some points. We have specified environments even though. Drupal console knows which environment we are on. So I'm going to build the Drupal 8 one. And Alan's asking me what branch I want. I'm going to choose 8.x. No, just 8.x. So that's going to run the compose command. I'm going to actually open this thing here so you can see the magic happen. So this is the bit that's going to take ages. So I, I just ran composer previously. And we'll just do a little update. It's going to be fast this time. That will check out all the all stuff into the vendor folder. So now it's doing the settings PHP, settings local, man cache. You can see it's just generated. And at this point, it's doing a site install from scratch because there isn't a DB dump yet. Which should, should have some music now as well. <laughs> uh, we, we need something like. Uh, Something just to just to use the empty space like between uh, almost there. You could sing the ripples. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
last part, site updates. So you can see the commands going on there, maintenance, <coughs> clearing cache, enabling, disabling varnish, and maintenance mode off. And it says successful. So far, I'm happy with the demo. And just check that we've got a site. Complete, grow. Boom, we've got a site, yeah. That's my site. To prove that this site is acting as an actual site, not just a screenshot, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some changes on it. So, I'm gonna do, mm -hmm. I can put my name there. So let's do, um, first thing I want to do, I'm gonna um, export the dump. So let me just check, I, I don't know where the dump should be, I'm just gonna check. Um, So the bug site the eight. So that what did I do wrong? Can someone say? I don't know what happens. No, sorry, I know what it is. There you go. So this is where the dump should be. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go into this folder, site folder. That's there. There and then do let me just check status. Um, okay, that doesn't look right. Right, okay, web that's what I need. That's better. Now I'm gonna just just do them. Um, I'm using Drush commands, I know it's a Drupal console presentation, but I'm using Drush. And I'll, I'll explain why we, we, we still use Drush later, in case anyone is wondering. So what I'm going to do now, um, change something. So I'm going to change, um, let's say a site install, I'm going to change the site name to an example. If I do Drush set system.site name example. Oops. Yep, then that should say example. Great. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, export configuration. That should come here. Yeah, it's there. Great. And let's just check what's there. Yeah, it's all there. Great. Now, that says example. If I reinstate the database, I did database dump before I changed the site name. If I do I ring stage, go back to site install, hopefully. And uh, Drupal, let's, let's check this thing. This site. So these are our commands again. I'm going to run the DB import. This one. So Drupal site DB import. And I'm going to choose the Drupal 8 example. So that's gonna, the only thing it's going to do is um, importing the dump and resetting the password. So that should be back to site install. So if I want to import the config, I could run the db update, uh, sorry, the site update command. And choose the date again. Maintenance mode, etc, etc. Import config at the end. Done. Done. Oops, still making this mode. Okay. It says crush S set rather than C set in the given. Does that make the And where? Asset. Oh, yeah. This one. Maybe just this one. It's a is a set is a setting. It's state, oh, isn't it? State. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, it's for yeah, for you set the names now. Yeah. So it's back to example because I imported config. Um, that's the next thing I want to do. I want to change that uh, configuration manually. Sync. I'll change the I'll change the same same conf, uh, same thing. Change to uh, example, change it. Like that. 
Anyone wants to suggest a pun on here? No? And so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to run a command that will, that will build the site again. I'm going to skip some steps, just make it quick. Site, build. And I'm going to say local. I'm going to say, I could actually say name of site first. Then I don't get into the interactive mode. And then local. And I want to say, I'm going to skip checkout, compose. And npm and run. So basically, it's going to run just settings, import database, import config. And I did something wrong here, which I don't know. That's the equals, yes. Equals. So let's keep the first part, it's doing the last two bits. Just wait. Well, so far it's been success. Thought it was going to explode before. 100%. You were 100%. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for trusting. <coughs> Thanks for trusting. Right then. Um, what should that say? Site and call. <coughs> now they should say example change it. Please. Ah, what? <laughs> Great. Um, right then. Um, we have time for one more, do we? Um, well, a little bit more history. So we've been using this thing in Drupal 8 for uh, like since December. And recently, we decided that uh, since we're not going to be migrating all of our sites to Drupal 8, and we still have some maintenance to do on the download the beach sheets, and we just said, OK, let's, um, let's make this thing support Drupal 7 as well. And this is why you use Drush. We need Drush to support Drupal 7. So we, we just use Drush in the, the background. We could be doing something like using Drupal console only in Drupal 8 in Drush in the background. But yeah, yeah, you could. Some of those commands like site mode. Yeah, but since since the same commands work, they work on both, for now we're going to just uh, stick with this. Um, we're not yet using this. We're just in the last phase of development. Probably still buggy. But it's working. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. I um, don't know if this one's gonna work. So that's the Drupal 7 site. Let's go. Drupal. Um, oh, so one of the one of the disadvantages of, of using Drupal 7 is because it, it has a make file and doesn't have a composer file. So you cannot say, ah, I want to have this this true with my site, like with Composer. So because of that, we need to run another command, which is the distro, um, distro build. That's the distro build command. It will build the distro in a folder, and then the other the site build is going to stick inside, inside the folder. I already built this previously. That's why we, we can see this. Distro is there. I'm going to just run the site build. Same thing, skip equals npm and run. But then I'm going to be checking out and running a make file in this case. Uh, so I want number one, the seven example. And I want the seven x branch. It, it suggests me seven x branch as the default branch because that's what's in the YAML file for this site. So that should be doing something here now inside this folder. Done already. Okay, so now it's um, doing the site install. Great, and we have a site. Do we have time for one more? This is very experimental. This part, very experimental. This is um, it's a triple seven site built with Composer. So we use Composer to check out do, uh, the core inside a folder, and then the site gets checked out inside the site's folder. I'll just show very quickly. So I can actually run the same command I ran before. I'm going to choose the one with Composer. And engage. 
I don't have that site running here, I didn't create VHOS for it, but you can see where everything goes. Core will stick inside there and sites will come here. So in other words, you won't see the site, but you can see that it does work. And so that's the experimental bit. Um, there's a link there if you want to check this test. Um, some, some things that I put on the list here is easy to maintain the compose loop, then make files. You can do like composer updates and update all your Drupal 7 modules if you want. In works the same way as Drupal 8. So this is the, the link for the um, example sites. There's one for 7, 7x seven composer, 8, and 8 with config exported. And to be continued, um, maybe we have another talk explaining how we use these on the other environments, on CI, QA, staging, production. We have some chains to that stuff. And that's the link for the presentation if you want to see any of the materials on the presentation. Thank you very much. And now I give you Jesus. Thank you for coming. So this will be like a little faster than the triple con session. Yeah, I was talking about how to write commands. Marcel already told you how to write triple console commands without writing in a line of PHP, like using chains, which is one of the more like unknown features of Drupal console. We haven't done a lot of noise about it, because we're still like trying to like get it more stable. But since Marcel started doing a lot of things, we were like improving a lot as he was mentioning, like you know, how to discovering part and you know, adding like variables, adding like placeholders for it. There's a lot of things coming into or like that we were adding lately. And we're pretty happy how it work, how it's working now, but we are going to start probably I will probably working on the uh, documentation section because there's no documentation at all. For, for that piece of the, of the project, so I will be working during Vienna. You go to Vienna and want to contribute, and you might be thinking writing code for Drupal Council is a little complicated. Well, you can help us on the uh, documentation part of it. Well, now I'll show you how to write commands, create, I mean, your own custom command, <coughs> add it to your module, and just, just execute some PHP code to it. And, well, my end, I am Jesus Manuel Olivas. You can find me on any social network at JMOLIS. I'm co-founder and head of We Know. We Know is a uh, company. We do a lot of Drupal development, like offshore and stock augmentation. And, uh, and we are a fully remote company. We're, we're in like 12 countries now, from Mexico to Argentina, on in Australia, to the in France. So this is the website, we, we Know INC. Come, let's keep moving. What is, well, I'm just gonna go fast. You might be aware of what is Drupal console. I'll show you how to solve Drupal console. Let's go faster on that part. This is, I'll show you how to create custom commands. I'll skip the chain command because we already saw it here. And I'll show you how to create I mean, how to add commands to your project. And first, what is Drupal console? Drupal console is a Drupal CLI. It is um, a tool to generate, to generate uh, boilerplate code, to interact with Drupal as well, and debug Drupal. So we start the project as a code generator, a scaffolding tool. You know, Drupal 8 introduces a lot of complexity. It's great in a module or a plugin, or you know, there's let's say all of the components of Drupal are within a module, right? That has like plugin or form or something. All that kind of thing now requires way more code than before. But you need to create a file, a proper directory, add a few like use statements for it to make it work. So it's kind of a little more complicated. So when we start, when we saw that in Drupal 8. We decided to bring the Symphony console component to the table. It, you know, add, make, make, add that functionality because if you go to Symphony World, that's, and you will you will find out that there's commands for generating code, and you can you can find that in like Ruby and Ruby and Rails. You can find this code generators in other projects as well. I mean, in PHP projects, there is for Artisan, for Laravel, there is Bake for EK. You know, there's a lot of projects. So we decided to go that way. At some point, Drupal console, I mean, again, starts a scaffolding too, but then. We realized when we created routes and you know, controllers and forms and plugins while we're generating those, we required to required to debug the system just to confirm all those components were proper, properly created and registered on the system. This is where all of the debugging commands started, you know, being added. You know, debug plugins, so list all of the plugins, debug routes. 
for listing all of the routes. Debug, a container, I'll list, in, list you all of the uh, services registered on the service containers. So all of the generators that we just create, it ha has its own like debug command. But at some point, while we were, I mean, working on the project, some people start asking for, can we have a command for installing a module? Can we have a command for for like exporting configuration or importing configuration or you know do a database dump. We were like we were unsure at the beginning because we were trying to like um, work together with Trash project. So we kind of I mean and in that part I mean I went to San Francisco. We brought an integration. That integration was never merged with the Trash side. So we get like you know that ain't going to happen. So we decide to start accepting pull requests for adding those commands. You know. Those commands that you have with Drush, you know, like daily I mean, task, I mean, or your daily task, or I mean task for, for Drupal. So that, that now that we have commands for install module, uninstall module, export configuration, setting your site on like maintenance mode, you know, changing configuration or state, and, and all those all those commands that you use in a daily basis. And, and that's what I was talking about. We start as scaffolding, then convert the project, the project just evolve into a full CLI. And well, Drupal console must be installed per site, and this is because of Composer and how this is the way you manage your dependencies. Composer is a is a project to manage dependencies of a PHP, right? So it's a, a, a package manager for PHP. All of your dependencies should be declared declared within your site. That's why Drupal console must be installed per site. When we first start the project, you're gonna have Drupal console running globally without installing. But that works fine on 8.0. Once 8.1 gets out, Drupal, I mean, the, the Symphony components on Drupal 8.1 were different than those on 8.0. And we're starting to start having a lot of issues to it, like dependency conflicts. There's something we call dependency hell. So we decided instead to go to the route of, you know, manage Drupal console per project. We still provide an executable global file. We call this launch, call it launcher. This file allows you to find Drupal installed per site. So that's, that's, you can type Drupal from anywhere in your system. So what you saw with Marcelo presentation, he is using Drupal console to, I mean, he's extending Drupal console, adding the global commands through the launcher. So the launcher is the one who finds those commands, right? So you, have, you can have commands in your site or you can have commands like globally available. And the launcher is the one who finds out those commands either globally or per site. But, but if you want to have all of the commands in Drupal console installed per site, the launcher has I a mean, minimum amount of commands, but again, allows you to find it, to find any Drupal installation. So in order to get Drupal console in your system, you just those are require, package name, which is Drupal console. And while well, we have some some class here, like prefer this, other bits of water, don't worry about it. So what you need to do is those are required. So require this package in your site. So before this, it means you need to go city, your CD and your Drupal site to run all native calls are required. Okay, what if you want to, instead of running this, what if you want to create a new project? There is a uh, project called Drupal Composer. It's a composer template that already contains Drupal, Drive, Drupal Console, BHAG, PHP Unit, all of the packages that you require for working with D8. So if you want to uh, create a new project, you can go Composer, Create Project, and and you specify which uh, which composer project you want to use, composer template you want to use, or you can use the site new command that Marcel was showing you. Drupal site new, and this will allow you to select from different packages, from different templates. I think we are, at this point, we have like three. I mean, I mean it's like we just use because they are the most common. Like, this is Drupal composer, the other one is Aculining, and the other one, I don't think, I don't remember what it is. But we are trying to figure out which packages to add there. So, so far now we are adding all those three. Because we are not, or those three are the more well supported. Okay, once you have Drupal console in your site, you, if you don't have the launcher, you need to figure out where you, where you are at. If you are the root of your project, then you type bin, vendor in Drupal. But what if you are within the web directory or the doc root directory if you are using Linux? Then you start to find out, you know, you know that, that something, a vendor in Drupal. What if you are within web? Modules, custom, you have to figure out where you're at. To avoid this, you can get the launcher, right? The launcher, again, is the global executable that you can have in your system. I mean, this one, I mean, this guy, 
all these guys do in order to install the launcher, you just use curl command, get the installer in your system, just move to a place that is globally accessible. In this case, I'm moving to user local in Drupal, make, make, make it executable. And once you have this, you can just go to your site, any directory within your site, could be the root, could be web, could be modules, any directory, and just type Drupal, and we'll automatically find the Drupal console per site installed in, in, in that specific site, which is very, very cool because you don't have to figure out where you are at. And before, again, before jumping into creating a new command, I want to tell you my, there, there might be there is a comment for that. We have a lot of commands. If you want to figure out which command we have in the system, I mean, available in Drupal console, just type Drupal. They no longer need to type Drupal list to see all of those commands. We changed that because we're like, if you want to see the list, we just type Drupal and you will see all of those commands. Before creating a new one, make sure to take a look. There's a lot of generators. There is the, uh, we have, at this point, we have 178 commands, something like that. There's a huge amount list of commands. Some of those commands are only available when you have a module installed, like features. We have features, feature import command. But that's it's only listed if you have the features module installed in your site. I mean, our goal is to extract some of those commands and send them to those specific modules, but it's like, sometimes it's kind of complicated with Drupal, so we decided to keep it here. We have a way to manage that dependency. You know, if a command depends on module, we use annotations for letting the command you know, show only if this module is installed. Again, before creating a new command, make sure you just, just list and, and find out if there's already a command for that. My thing, again, it's not that I don't want you to write commands, I'm just giving you options. We have something we call shell command. Let's say, if I want to run something real quick, I mean real fast with Drupal, I can go here, and copy this. I can go and can go Drupal, and then shell, this will be Put me on a shell, a PHP shell. This shell has Drupal already bootstrap, so it means if I use that Drupal static class, I will be able to access any, any service, anything within Drupal. So in this case, I'm getting that entity titanic service. Then what I will see, I will define the new firewall called NID. Then I will call the entity that type manager, I will get this node storage, because I want to query Drupal. This and finally, I will do something like this. No. Wait. So, what is happening here? I'm just telling you, I'm selling the shell. You know, give me, a, give me the instance of the entity type service, just put it on the uh, type manager variable. Then I'm just de defining a new variable in node ID. Then I'm calling the node storage and I'm, querying, I'm doing a bit of a square here and extracting the label of that. Of that. So, what, it's, what I'm doing here. I'm writing PHP code, which is running through the Drupal, through the, this Drupal installation, because Drupal is already bootstrapped here. Okay, this is a node 10. How can I see if this is true? Okay. If I go to my site, I will see. I already own this. Let me see. Drupal site. Drupal. Bootstrap Drupal from here. You will see this is my Drupal site. It has some nodes preloaded. So one of those nodes is ten. Let's see which one. Ten. Yeah, it's this one, right? You can see the same label that I was showing you. You can see a lot. If you do want to generate some data from Drupal, some like more nodes. Can use create nodes commands. We have this. This is mostly like you know, devil generate. And uh, we have a Drupal console without having devil because that you know the dummy data generation is part of Drupal core, it's not part of devil. Devil is only like a wrapper for it. Same as Drupal console. Okay, let me go back to this. Okay. Let me show you what I show you is the shell command. The shell command, it's, it helps with something like real fast, but in this case, I mean, there were like three lines of code, I mean, or four lines of code, it wasn't that bad too. But we are adding on the next release, because we are keep always adding new things, because you know, we like to add new stuff. We add this new command called snippet. 
you run this command. It's called Drupal. It's an APIT. And you specify a hyphen hyphen file, I don't know if you saw it. It's in the very, very top. You specify the file option and you give it a path name to a PHP file. What this command will do <coughs> is execute what's within this file. If I run this, so I have this exactly the same code that I show you on chill, but now this is within this PHP file. So let me show you what's in the file. So this is what this is the code on the file. It's exactly the same code that I show you through shell, but it's within this PHP file. So what the uh, snippet command do, it's get this code and execute it for you. You can also pass code if you want to. You can do something like snippet code, and just any PH, valid PHP code will be executed, like in this case, hello world. Just, that's what I'm telling you to do, is echo hello world. And if you go to the previous file, and specify show good, what it will going to happen is at the very top it will show you the PHP code that will be executing and at the very end it will show you the execution. So I mean if you want to run something real quick without writing or without messing with writing a new command, you can do something like this, which is way, way more simple. We sometimes use this for like, you know, removing a specific like data from Drupal, like all of this, all the I mean just remove any data from this content type. So we kind of used to have this one for a long time for like our own purposes. We decided, you know, it's kind of sounds like interesting to have. We decided to add it on the latest version. Well, now, if you really want to write a command, you need to understand a few little things. A Drupal console, I get the advantage of Symfony console component. And the way we write commands is just exactly the same as it happens on Symfony. So if you know how to write a command on Symfony or using Symfony console, you will find out it's just exactly the same. So we use the command lifecycle mechanism that's provided by the component. So and this is, I mean, it consists of three methods from within the lifecycle. First one is initialize. This is an optional method. You can use this one again to initialize any, any variables with your command. You can say, you know, this is most used, this is probably most used when you have a set of commands that share, I mean, that share some similar functionality. So you have some specific, I mean, I mean, a specific initialization on this one, and then it has it integrated your base class and make the rest of your commands extend that that base class. Second method, which is also optional, and I mean, in those methods, and we call this lifecycle because this is the this is how works are executed. You know, initialize first, then the interact method. The interact method. It's the place where you set the logic for asking things to user. You know, something like, "What's the node ID number?" You know, "What's the?" Uh, you ask for things. So this is the place where we interact with, with the user while creating commands. And probably this is the part that shines the most on Drupal console because that yeah, that that I mean, interaction is really nice because it allows you to ask I mean, questions to the user. So you can store those later on to use on the execute method. In the execute method. It's the only one that is required. So this is the one who has the business logic of your command. And again, you can have you can have commands within extensions within within Drupal on Drupal eight. I mean, before in Drupal seven, we used to call like modules, themes, profiles, or something else. We still call like that on Drupal eight. But in the end, either modules, themes, and profiles. I mean. The three of them are extensions within Drupal. So it's kind of share the same like root, which is like let's handle, and um, the mechanism for for managing them is pretty much kind of share across. So it's kind of called let's say it's now only they call them extensions, but in the end we keep calling them modules, things, and profiles. But it's like so we can have commands on those extensions. We can also have commands either globally, and we can also have commands on external PHP packages. And how to do this? In order to create commands or your custom commands, uh, those commands should extend either one of those base classes. We have a command base class and a more advanced container aware command class. So when we're, while writing commands, we suggest you to, to extend one of the provided Drupal console commands. And within my command class definition, I am reading or receiving this one through the class construct method. So I am receiving here, you know, right here. Right here, I'm receiving within the constructor an entity type, 
and I'm setting this to my local, to a local broker. So what I'm doing, you know, when creating in this class or this command as a service, I mean, I mean, extracting one service from Drupal container and just passing this one. What is happening here is this command will be only available to act to have access to that specific service. If you use the container where command plus, you will be able to access any service within service within the container, which probably could be a little dangerous. That's why I really highly recommend you to use this basic command class. And we also have the execute method, which is showing something, you know, only a message, and the interact method, which is only empty. Now let's add some logic to it. Drupal list. If I go Drupal list default, since I haven't installed the module, nothing will show up. What I need to do is go here, go Drupal module install, and then example, which is the module name. Once I finish this, it will, this will be loaded. So the module gets installed, the cache is rebuilt, and it didn't work. Sometimes you need to clear cache more than once. Example, that's why. List example. Drupal list example command is here. It means if I go Drupal example and then go to default, which is the command name. What is going to happen is this command will be executed. And then it will show this little message. Now, what I will do is just add some logic to it. Again, what it happens here is I it creates a command class and just extend the basic command class again and I'm using dependency injection to pass one of the services from Drupal container to my command. If I want to skip that part, I can extend the container aware command class and then access any service just by using this get and then passing the service name. Again, this could be little dangerous because you have access to any service within the container and this class will be like really hard to write test I mean writing a test for it so I really highly recommend you to go with the first option and well this is how this one happens you know, definition. now let's add some logic to it what I will do right now is add an option to my command so I can do something like you know hyphen hyphen in ID passing a node ID I will copy this one just paste it on the uh, configure method of my command class. I'm adding a new option. I'm just giving the, an option name, which is NID. I am setting the rule <coughs> on the uh, shortcut name for the option and I'm telling this option to be optional. In this case, I mean, I can take advantage of the translatable in files to do this, but I'm going to skip this one and just say no ID. Now, if I go here, if I help, what I will see is this new option will show up. But it's not, because I missed something. I miss copying this importing this statement here, paste it, run it again. And as we can see, we have the new option register to my command. So what I'm telling to this command, now this command has this, this option available. Moving forward, what I will do, I just add, I will add a new code for the interactive mode. Let's say, what I will do here is, asking for that node ID, and if this is no, then I will ask a question to the user to enter the value. So I go to the interact mode, and just paste this little code here. What I'm doing here again, I'm just 
using the input object that is being received from this interact method, getting the option name that I just registered on the configure section, and asking for if it's no, then use the ask helper to ask a new input question to the user. And finally, what I will do, I will add the little logic to my command on the execution. And what this code is, what this code helped me to do is, pretty much I'm doing the same example that I showed you on the snippet and on the uh, shell. What I'm doing here is getting the, in this case, getting the, uh, NI, the node ID value from the option that I would use when executing the command. Then what I'm doing, I'm getting the, using the node storage, the entity type manager and the node storage and loading the node ID that the user has when executing the command. Finally, it's telling us there's no node, I mean, if this is no, then I'm telling you know, invalid node number. You can do anything over here. As you can see here, I'm using error instead of, of write or input. And this will help <coughs> allow me to you know, render this big red message, I mean, showing that you know, this is a real error. And I'm returning one, error code one. I mean, you can return any error code that you want to. You can define your own, I mean, if you want to. The only thing that you need to be aware of when running commands on the CLI, anything different than zero is an error code. So I'm telling you, there's an error here, just return one. And, if, and then if the node, if node is not, I mean, it's not null, then I will show you, you know, something like, I will show an info message and then showing the, the value for that node. Drupal example default. See, I didn't pass the option right, so it's asking me to it. It's a 10. Yeah, it's telling me right. So I'm telling, I'm running the command. I am not passing the node ID, then the command is asking me for it. I enter the value. What if I want to run this command and passing the node ID? I can do node ID equals 10. And then the interactive mode will be skipped because I provide a value to it. So there's no, no reason to ask for it. I just take this value and then and this is and you execute. So that this again, this is what happens. The command runs, then the interactive mode is the one that gets triggered first, and then the execute method is the one that gets triggered. Okay, commands in a standard PHP mean package store libraries. The same way you can add commands to a module, you can also add to an internal library. What could be a good reason to, for this? A good reason for this is for is because Whenever you add a command to a module, you require to install this module. And that installation requires to export Drupal configuration and make you know, a lot of changes to it. I mean, nowadays we have config split that allow you to tell you know to select which pieces of the configuration I want to export with Drupal. I mean, last year it wasn't like that. And for our projects, we used to have commands that we only want to run on our local environment or where we are developing. So by providing commands on PHP, I mean external packages or external libraries, we can add commands to uh, you know, a specific project or PHP package and then do something like compose require there. So I, I can require a specific PHP library or package that contains your proposal command, but it only gets added when composer get installed using you know, the web packages. So when, I, when I'm deploying my site, I can run composer install, no web, and those packages won't be deployed on my site. It means those commands won't be available on that site. Because so some of those commands are a little dangerous because they have heavy actions on the server or on the site, and we don't want those commands to be available on the site while the site is in production. So you can provide commands on external I mean, projects or PHP projects that doesn't have to be a module, and you can skip those commands to get deployed to your production server. In order to do this, the only thing you need to do is create a PHP package and let no composer 
the type of your project in Drupal console library. That's the only thing you need to do. Once you do this, Drupal console will, will take care of read or any metadata on, on this project. And it will take care of reading this console services file on that project and loading, and loading all those commands automatically discover and register within, I mean, on Drupal console. And if you need to have those commands to be able to run even when Drupal is not installed, let's say the first time you, you run Composer and create project, you add this specific library of your project and you want to run this command, even if Drupal is not installed, you can have this flag that we are defining to give it a better name. So we call something like bootstrap on install, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're trying to figure out for a better name. And again, the only thing you need to do is create this console service file, tell Composer this is a Drupal console library, and just start your services at Drupal command, and Drupal console will take care of the rest. And how do you require this package? You use something like composer, require, and then your package name. Again, you can do something like hyphen hyphen dev, and this will be added on the development section or the dev section in your composer require. I mean, on your composer JSON file. You can have local commands, and that's what Marcelo was talking about. Having Drupal console, I mean, Drupal console flow on commands globally, and you need to have this console extend project you go to your own directory that console, run this command, and this will take care of the rest. And from there, you can just require your, your package that has Drupal console command. So what Marcelo showed you is a way to add in commands, I mean, or global commands to your Drupal, I mean, to your site. Let's skip this one. Okay. Mm, what if you want to, I mean, instead of creating a command for a project, you want to create a command or add a command to Drupal console core approach. You can do that. You can do that. Let's keep the chain command section because I'm already talked about it. And how, how about contributing to the project? Drupal console started growing a lot, I mean, during the development process, and we decided to, to make it more modular, so we separate the project, or we split the project in different projects. And this introduces I mean, an extra layer of complexity when people want to contribute. Because they need to like fork and clone different projects. And it's kind of hard to, to have all those projects, you know, fork in a specific directory and then have those and have your site that you want to test against. I mean, I mean connecting to those projects because it's it starts getting a little messy and complicated. We went to different options through first one was to provide a composer template that was a little hack to create sim links between your site and a specific, I mean, path in your system where you have fork and clone the different Drupal console projects. Then we went to writing a bash file to do all the, you know, the sim link and thing. And then at some point we decided, why don't we just write a chain command to take care of the thing? Why, I mean, we end up like writing this Huge, I mean, a batch find is like, not, not that we don't like batch. I'm writing batch script, I mean, scripting in batch, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Because, I mean, I really love to automate, but at some point we say, no, let's create a batch, let's, let's replace the batch with a J command, and that's, that's it. So what you, need to, what you need to do, if you want to contribute, you need to fork, I mean, all of the repositories that you want to, I mean, contribute with, because, I mean, we have Drupal console, Drupal console core, Drupal console, and then, you know, E N E S, you know, any language we have Drupal console develop, Drupal console, we have plenty of projects. So you need to fork those, then you need to clone those in a specific directory. Let's say we fork three of them or four of them, and we clone in this directory. Let's say we put those in Drupal console code directory on my system. So I, I'm pretty sure starting from here, I have Drupal console, Drupal console core, Drupal console E N or Drupal console E S, any other one. And then the only thing you need to do is run the develop contribute command. This is a chain command that is it's running globally in your system. So you run this one and you just pass two options. The first one is the directory where a new Drupal site will be installed for you. So you don't, you, don't, you don't have to run this against a currently working Drupal site. This will take care of getting the latest version of Drupal for you. And, will, and then you say, you know, this is the path where I fork and clone all of the different Drupal console projects, and this will take care of creating 
all of the same links. If so, if you run after running after running this command, and Drupal gets downloaded in your system, if you run listing within the vendor Drupal directory, what you will see it's each one of those directories instead of instead of being a I mean real directory, it's only a sim link in your system where you have all your projects fork and gone, right? So this allows you to start to go into this place and change code, and this is automatically, I mean, available on the Drupal site that just gets downloaded I mean, a minute ago with the command, which is really helpful for us. I mean, it creates sim links for you. It also makes some changes on one of the files that you have in, on Drupal console. For, for like changing the auto loading, for making sure everything works fine. But yeah, just by running that command, you can start contributing to Drupal Console. Because was, that was probably the biggest complaint we have. People want to contribute, but they get stuck in how can I get my system set up to start creating or adding new commands? Or even, you know, for testing something. You know, they were like, I changed this one, but I mean, I'm not sure how to test it, so you can do something like this. And right, again, just finally, just to to finalize, we provide you with two commands that you can copy paste for creating Drupal console commands. This is one example command, and this is example container aware command. Similar to what I've talked about, you know, the, the base command and the, you know, the container aware command, those, this one extends the base one, this one extends the container aware command. Those classes contain some examples of code, I mean, I mean documentation, how to, how, to make the, how to make those work. And just as a final note, something you need to be aware of. Symphony console, I mean Drupal console is a Symphony application, it's not a Drupal module. So the uh, coding style or the, that you will find out in the project, it's PSR2, coding style. I mean, um, compatible, so indentation will be a little different, you know, opening and closing brackets could be a little different than you are used to if you are using Drupal. And used to, I mean, don't worry about it. Only Drupal console, I mean project, it's Symphony. I mean PSR2 coding style. All of the generated code is you know Drupal coding style and compatible. And there is there is tools for for validating your code. You know, there's this code sniffer tool that allows you to I mean indent and change your code. Actually, I have a project called PHP QA that it takes care of running like PHP unit, code sniffer, I mean, you know, code unifiers in your project. So you can probably search for it. And well, that's all I have. So thank you. Any questions? Another question? Sure. Go ahead. What are your? Um, do you have any uh, cool new commands that are you're thinking you're going to be including soon? Anything uh, on the horizon that maybe people have suggested or you guys are thinking about? Uh, we were really looking forward to to start using Drupal Console for do more automation, you know, like like building sites from scratch, you know, or rebuilding artifacts and deploying and we've been working on that for a while. But then after talking to Mauricio, what what I think we're going to do is keep the this I mean the, the communication going and most of the a lot of the work he's been doing probably get getting will be get introduced into the two point version. Mm. So I mean we really want to Take more more advantage of the autom 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 automating things on, on Drupal through Drupal console. Yeah, pretty much like you know building artifacts, deploying sites. But the whole CI pipeline. And stuff. Yeah, actually the whole the whole the pipeline for for automation and you know CI continuous integration delivery and continuous deployment. Cool. Well, sure. Big command to create um, articles. Yep. Uh, can we use that with Bing Ads? Say inside Bing Ad, you want to create some content, then test that content. Do you see that happening? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, since that's the building core, I'm pretty sure the, uh, I, haven't, I haven't test real, I haven't done a real test for Bing Ad on Drupal. I haven't done a lot of Bing Ad on Symphony or Drupal. But there is this thing called Bing Ad driver, or Drupal driver for Bing Ad. And I'm pretty sure that could be part of it. If it's not, I mean, it won't be that hard to code because it's part of the Drupal core. Mm -hmm. But yeah, actually, I saw an issue today about when you can you can create something like create an entity, and you can say create an entity with default data or something like that, and just kind of basically create this entity for you and just populate with dummy data. So it's pretty much just taking advantage of that functionality, of course. It will be nice to have something like that on the
you have any stats on how many people are using Drupal Console at the moment? No, we have the, uh, the download number, which is usually going crazy since uh, doubling it last year. We don't expect this. It's pretty cool. Just let me clear the cat because Drupal is so heavy in caching. Do you have like an amazing key from the account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would be nice. Of <laughs> like we had in the ages. <laughs> yeah, we have this uh, project to, this is a little piece of code to read packages and we read also, I mean, GitHub. Because the first versions of Drupal console will download it via the FAR file on GitHub. So we have this little way of counting. So it's mostly based on package number of downloads when people run something in the composer, you know, require Drupal console. And I'm doing catch to make my blog available. A million and a quarter or something like that would be the amount of people like downloading. I mean, how many people ask uh, or sites running? That's kind of hard to know. Yeah. But we can get a number of how many people download the project. So it's about a million and a quarter. Yeah, last doubling was like just like a quarter million. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just went totally crazy. Like, yeah. you know, like when you figure out like in, in a month, we get like, you know, I mean, you just, you just go crazy. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It means people are using it now. It means people, there's more people using Drupal 8 also. Yeah. More people like, because I mean, even in Dublin, where people are like starting to work with Drupal, but now it seems like every other one is working, really taking advantage of what Drupal 8 provides. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the way we extend the launcher with our own commands, this, I don't think it's like we've already resolved, I can't remember, but we, we check out the extend project and then we require our thing on top of it. So we have to script that, right? No, we, so we don't do that anymore. anymore. Okay. Because we, we were doing that because there was um, there was some bugs on the version of Drupal, um, the, the, the bin, oh. there was some bugs on it and we could not use our thing. So we had, uh, also we had to patch, um, we had to patch the launcher to make it work with what we wanted. And this is why we were, we were doing like it does with the chains. We were checking out the launcher, checking out the core, and creating a scene link and executing that every time. Because of, because we wanted to patch it. Now it's fixed all the problems we had before. And uh, I think with the, the injection services as well that we, we needed yeah. to <coughs> do it. And it's all fixed now. We are using uh, executable file. We're no longer using that stuff. Oh, but, right. So we no, we no longer say require of our commands no, on Just okay. use the same uh, command that showed like how to install. Okay. The, the way we solve that issue, because we, I wrote this uh, Composer plugin, so this allows you to like rebuild the cache of all the packages in your system. So what it happens when you run Composer require and you require your package that contains commands, mm -hmm. so this project runs, find out all of those PHP packages, declare a Drupal console library, and creates a cache for those and, re and creates a, this console.extend.yml file, put it on the right place, and then Drupal console find out from there. So it kind of warm up all those commands and for the discovery part, just to avoid reloading every single package. I mean, I mean all the package, every single run. But yeah, I mean, this, this, this is how we fix it. Because I mean, Marcel told me about the issues about if you were like forking the project and adding your own functionality. And if you, rem if you remember that, if the extent, I mean, the ex extended or the global commands were registered to this config.yml file instead of the console.yml file. So the way you register commands now, either globally for, I mean, globally for external packages, is just the same way as you use register for modules. So we kind of, I mean, standardize the way of doing that and wrote, in, wrote this Composer plugin to take advantage of all that. Actually, there is, I think there's a couple of, there's an issue for that, we will talk discussing about. There's a few things to, to, to fix, but yeah, it's, other than that, it's just, there, you, there's no longer need to do that. It's because we're using this. He doesn't know because he was on holidays, he was getting married, he just came back. Oh! He hasn't been updated for yes. me. I missed this. Yeah. 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 We were, <laughs> I actually, we were like collaborating since I mean, a while, and, and I want to thank you because all of, a lot of the work that you can see on chains is. Thanks, too. Thanks for doing the work. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's it just I mean, once you start seeing what's happening, how people is doing things in Drupal Console that we never think about it, you know, that kind of thing for for building the whole thing. So we start, again, as I mentioned, we start working on on doing all, all the automation ourselves, but we were writing commands 
and then we figure out, okay, what can we change? But we stop doing that because we get busy on some client work and other things. And then show me, and I said, show me what he was doing. And like, oh, let's let's just stop what we are doing. Let's again, let's take his work and trying to introduce in the project in a more like generic way, so we can take advantage of it and just just be part of the project. So so Drupal Console 2.0 will have more, I mean a lot of that functionality, which is really pretty awesome. Nice. After you were featured in the GitHub release radar at the beginning of this month, did you notice there's been a lot more questions and are you getting a lot more people contacting you? Yeah, th there is there's more issues coming like like lately than before. And which is pretty common. People ask things like, how can I do this? And I like, just my question is like, this is the link for the documentation. And it's pretty. I mean, I totally and I totally accept this part or fault because we don't have any documentation at all. It was totally outdated. So part of my duties, starting something like March, for DrupalCon, uh, what was it, America? Baltimore. Huh? Baltimore. Yeah, for DrupalCon Baltimore. So that I started like a month before Baltimore to start like updating the, the docs because I mean they were totally outdated. Actually. When I find out that they're still, they're still telling you Composer Global required Drupal Console, it's like people complaining, I'm having this issue. And I was like, that issue is so old. Why is people getting this one? And I was telling them, no, you should know this global, blah, blah, blah. And then someone sent me the link. I just follow in your instructions. Like, OK, my bad. I'll fix it. Now, it's, it's documentation is more, it's way better now. And as I mentioned, I will be working on the chain part, but there's no mention at all. So when Mar Mar Marcel told me about about the uh, he was working on chain and all the things he was doing, I was like, "How do you find out about it?" And he's like, "No one knows it. How do you?" In fact, <laughs> um, the first time David was always with me doing all these things. We were like uh, going back and forth with ideas, and the first time we actually managed to extend Drupal Console was like a massive. Hack, but it was like quite, quite neat hack because we hooked into your your YAML files, your service of YAML files, I think, not config YAML, and we put our own things there and actually worked. And we're like, wow, that's great. <laughs> and without any documentation, just found out everything by looking into the example that PHP you just showed. That was our, our starting point, so it was really good. Yeah, it's, it's uh, we use that a lot. Actually, when you install Drupal Console, you run Drupal init command, and that copies some YAML files in your system. And those are chain commands, so like site new. Because I remember site new was broken, and instead of like again instead of coding, we decided to create a chain command for that because it was it was way more simple. And that was that was like an idea for Marcelo was why don't we just instead just just remove that class and just use this one. And 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 since since chains can run either Drupal console or any other shell command. So we can run Composer from there. Those are required. I mean, you know, Composer install. Actually, there is an issue. There is an issue now with with Drupal 8.0 for testing 8.0. If you try to load, if you get the tar from Drupal, and then run something like Composer require trash, ain't going to happen. So I wrote a chain command to fix that for you. So I will probably releasing that. Once 8.0 gets released, but if you get Drupal either by cloning or getting the latest star from the 8.4, which it will be released on October, you won't be able to use Rush because there are some conflicts between dependencies. You need to run like three or four commands that are already automated using the chain command. So basically, you can use Drupal console to fix your Rush issues on Drupal 8.4. Unless they fix, which I don't think is going to happen because it's not their fault, it's more how Drupal 8.4. Before it gets packaged with their dependencies and the composer log file and Drupal and Drush dependencies, which is a little complicated because it's like Drush has Drush four and nine and there's there's it's getting messy. Yeah, this this is this is I mean, this is getting interesting and again, so probably what we you're gonna see on the next version is like more automated things, you know, like running things in there. We also we're having issues right now for 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 what using for what using lately, something that you will find out on later lately on the documentation how to run Drupal console on containers. 
So we, we have support for site aliases. As you can see, Mauricio was running <coughs> Drupal and then give it an alias name or a site name. So we have support for that. And we also add, lately add support for running Drupal console through containers without running, you know, Docker, something like XA, you know, and user, blah, blah, blah. So you can create your own site, site aliases and prefix, you know, the, all the Docker thing that you want to do and then gets appended, prepended to your command on the uh, Drupal site alias execution. So you can run Drupal console through a remote server, right, you know, via SSH or through a big, you know, a Baker machine if you're using Drupal VM or using say alias system running through a Docker instance as well. That's probably most of the day what we're doing lately because we're doing a lot of Docker work. I mean, actually, we're no longer using Drupal VM. It's awesome. The VMs are not the future. Containers are. So, that's <laughs> Nice. So, do you have any question for me? No. I when are you going to roll this out? Sorry? <laughs> when are you going to roll this out? <laughs> so, um, DB slow. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the plan now is we're gonna go around the corner in the pub have a pint. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.